guys, just as I was saying to you downstairs, uh, we're going to do a Q&A. At this point, obviously, we don't need any introductions. You know, you have a superior basketball mind in your presence. We've already had a round of applause downstairs, but just for the Q&A section, let's give a round of applause, please, for Coach Jackie. One of the advantages that we have, um, having Coach here, is he's very, very uh, open to questions. Um, and as he said to me, his role is to try to make sure that you guys go away with all the information, all the knowledge, and having your questions answered as to how they do in the NBA, how they do in Europe. A couple of you guys have been asking about FIBA basketball too. Rather than hearing it from me or Coach Barney, this is what Coach Jackie is here for, all right? And, and on that point, as you guys know, um, credentials speak for themselves. NBA championship coach, Serbian national coach, EuroLeague, former star player as well, let's not forget that. Um, so the breadth of knowledge is going to be from the beginning to the end of the process. So feel free on the questions. Now, I have a, a set of questions here that have been given to me before. But for some of the older coaches or parents or whatever, if you've got questions that would like to be answered when we get to the end of this, these questions here, by all means put your hand up and we'll give you the opportunity to do that. Okay? All right, so we're sharing a mic, but I'm going to start the, the questions with... I've got a little question from Toby. Oh, my gosh. All right, so, Coach, there, there are a lot of similar questions about um, things that you look for from a, a point guard, a wing, just the players in general when you're scouting. So the first question coming from Toby is, as a senior coach who's seen it all, what do you look for uh, in a player? I mean, from his standpoint, a point guard, on and off the court, what things do you look for in terms of traits and qualities? First thing is body, body, body frame, you see, you know, Big, tall, in shape, you know, size. If you have, for NBA, you have to have enough size. You know, it's hard. There is some small point guards that, you know, they're playing on a high level, but they have to have some elite skill, you know, to overcome the the size, the lack of size that they have. Then if you have a size, if you have the enough athletic abilities, we are looking for a basketball like you. So what that means is that you know how to read the game. So it's not if you are a scorer and if you are forcing to score 30 points every game, even if the game doesn't allow you to do that, then we don't like. It. So you have to recognize what defense is giving you. So for example, they are double teaming you on pick and roll. Then you have to pass the ball well. You have to find the open guy. You have to understand what is a good shot and bad shot. So like that all sums up in basketball IQ. And I think the point guard has to have basketball IQ. And that, you know, it doesn't matter if you're a scoring point guard or if you're a passing point guard or if you, if you are, you know, you're doing both things. There are many point guards that can do the both things, but you have to make right decisions. Point guard has less right to make mistakes because he has more ball in his hands and he has, uh, one less mistake than others. That, that's what you're saying. And just, uh, I guess, in that vein, question, um, following on from you know what you're looking for as a point guard, one of the questions that came in is really interesting. They said, you know, one of the big things in basketball is height. It's something obviously out of a player's control. What are a player's prospects professionally if they don't attain average height for their position? It's, it's not just about height. For I would say today is mobility. Like if you are big and if, if you're not mobile enough, if you cannot move your feet well, in modern basketball, you have to run well, you have to be quick, you have to make quick decisions. And uh, sometimes somebody is seven footer, that's not enough. Right? You have to be more Why now Victor Remanyama is interesting to everybody and why his top prospect is because he's seven four, but he can move. So there, there is many big guys that are not interesting, but Victor is the guy who can move. So you have to move your feet. So like if you don't have a side, then you have to be really quick and very smart. 
So like almost all guards that are not big enough, they're super, super quick, super fast, and that's how they overcome the lack of the, of, of the size. And just in the, again, staying on track with training, uh, a popular question from a lot of different players is how many times and how long would you train uh, a day and a week as a young player? Uh, I, I said this to the previous group. Uh, I think over practice is equally bad as lack of practice. So you have to be balanced. So, uh, and for me, it's just it's not just a, a matter of you know time. It's what you do in practice. So, for example, if I'm doing you know three hours um, passing on a wall, am I going to be better player? No. So it's not how how much you do you work. It's what you work. So. Today we were, we were doing some fundamental passing, probably boring things for you guys, but it's for for your development. You have to do the basic things like dribble, to dribble good, to shoot well, to make a perfect form. Because now in your age, if you are improving your your, your shot, you have to shoot a lot. And then when you uh, masterize your shooting form, then you have to shoot game-like situations. So at first you have to make your shot to be automatic. You don't think like now I'm gonna, you know, follow through, I'm gonna, you know, uh, put the ball like this, I'm gonna, you know, do this rhythm. When you masterize your shooting form, then you don't think about that. You think only about making shot. And then you go in a game-like shot. But until you reach it, you have to do simple spot-up form shooting. Boring, but you cannot, you know, reach the game like Steph Curry shots, you know, you know, 30 feet or whatever without going the first step. It is like I always say you cannot build a house with, without building foundation, it's gonna fall down. So you have to do this simple, boring things, and you have to keep doing it all your career. Like people think now the NBA practice is super flashy practice that, that their players are doing, you know, dunking and shooting tricky shots or whatever. No, it's fundamental. It's fundamental. It's even, you know, these drills, some of those drills that we are doing today, that we were doing today, we are going to a worse practice. So, you know, probably, you know, it's not the answer that you will look for, but that's, but that's how it is. And so, get to get back on, on his question, I think that you have to, you, you can practice the pen if you go to school, then practicing every day is fine. So like, and I think that you should all go to school because uh, there is only small, small percentage of the players that actually become pro players that can live out of the school. And uh, that's why you have to have always plan B. Uh, and that's why you can, you should never leave school and you should always finish school. And I'm always saying, I don't know how in England is a uh, scoring system, but you know, that's why I, I'm, I'm advising everybody to go to States because in, in America you can finish college and play play basketball at the same time. And I don't know any country, I think maybe Japan has it. Do you have this in England? We do, but the level. The level is not high. Yeah. yeah. So, so. I mean, that's a, it's a great point that transitions into the next question. I've got a few people asking the same thing. Obviously, they, they watch basketball, um, see FIBA, see you and see NBA. And they're thinking, okay, look, I want to be there. And one of the questions that comes back to your point about advising to go to America, some of the questions are, what do they need to do or is it the right move for them to approach European basketball? Before profession, right? So go into training system in Europe, and why would you choose that against America? You answered some of it just now, but the European thing is different. I think European basketball up to 18 is very good. I think it's even maybe better than that. Like, but then college makes a difference. So why I'm saying this because now I'm living in the States, and many high school coaches are regular people. They just love basketball. They're not professional coaches and they don't know to teach people good things. Mm -hmm. And so then from college, the, then the serious level is, you know, going up and there are great coaches in college, but high school level in, in USA is not great as European youth basketball. So if you are now uh, looking now, FIBA under 18, under under 16, I think all those players are getting better than, 
the Indian players were there. But then the American players from the college are, you know, leaping up and, and you know, uh, becoming better than, uh, than, than we from Europe are. So, so I'm advising if you can go to college, like practicing here in England, you know, after 18, and then, you know, you finish high school in England, and then if you can go to the college, for me, that's the best. That's great. So, the in line again with that, it's a question from Kyrie for the players that are coming from Europe and transitioning to America. The question was, what's the biggest transition they could expect between European and American basketball? It's quickness, like quick decisions. And like, uh, I was trying to show one of those drills that you have to make the quick decisions. You, it's always harder to go from slow basketball to quick basketball than to play fast and then slow down. So some European teams are playing slow, more controlled game, and then when you go to the States, when there is up and down, up tempo game, you have a hard time to you know, adjust on that. So I think the, the, the fast basketball is the hardest basketball that you can play because it makes you make quick decisions. So like, like when we are doing this drill and you have two guys in the middle and four four guys and you should pass 4.5 seconds, you see how many times you made mistake, you know, you just throw the pass to the defender hands, you know, he didn't move. Why? Because your brain is not used to make a that big decision. You know, many players, they love getting the ball, doing jabs, doing dribbles, whatever, but that's not the basketball that you can transfer to, the, you know, high level basketball. Yes, yes, there is some situation that every superstar has an ISO game, but there is this is again not foundation. This is only when you got out of your set offense and then you know at the end of offense you're playing some nice ISO game. But the majority of basketball should be like quick decisions, shooting, passing, driving, that you have to think quickly and you have to practice quickly to think quickly in a game. You cannot do slow things and be lazy and, and and then you, you want to play fast on the game. I really believe that you should go and practice everything that you're doing on the game. Because game should be just, you know, easy replica of things that you already did on the That's my that's my thing. Um, and again, this will probably be the last question around this area, but just a little tweak on what we were speaking about before it comes from Papa John. And he was talking about, you know, that we're aware of the advantages of the American education system when it comes to basketball. But to your knowledge, what are your thoughts on how you can combine European basketball at the college and uh, university level in Europe, not America? Because, you know, it's not spoken about, is it because it's not popular, not prevalent? I you know, just wanted your thoughts on that. If, if I understand you well, like, you know, how you can combine college basketball when you get back in Europe? Right? No, before, let's say you don't go to uh, right. and you want to study college, university, I think, and I think it's now. hard. I think it's almost impossible. That's why I'm advising everybody to go to states. I think like in many teams are practicing twice per day and you cannot attend classes if, if you are practicing more in practice. So maybe yeah, some team going to let you practice only in your practices. Yeah, maybe it's doable, but I don't know if you're going to be too tired, you know, for a practice after if you spent all day on, on, on college. Like, System system in America allows you that you first go in the morning to the practice, so your classes are delayed, and then you go to the classes after. My son is mm -hmm. going to get to college, so that's why I'm knowing, uh, I know what they're doing over there. Mm -hmm. So my son signed now for Hawaii Pacific University, so he's going to play next year on Hawaii and play also. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's bad. <laughs> <laughs> Hawaii is uh, it's good to me. Yeah. <laughs> so. Um, we transition into about the game itself, right? Some of the questions that have come back just about um, game improvement and how to handle certain situations. Um, one of the questions, well, a couple of the questions that are veering towards not necessarily the physical side, but the mental side. And, you know, one of the questions that came back from actually a parent was, you know, everybody's happy after a win, and young people know how to celebrate the win. But when they lose, their emotional maturity is not great. And I think the question for a parent is, as a parent and a player, what do you do in this situation? Right? How do you handle 
how do you help a player get more mentally resilient so you can handle the wins and losses in the balance of it? The, the losing and winning are equal, equal part of the game. Yeah, we all love winning, but we can be mad and angry on ourselves only if we didn't give our best effort. Like, and, and, and I'm saying effort, effort is not just the physical effort, it's mental effort. Also. But and when you know that you gave your best and the opponent beat you, you can say just you know, congratulations and, and go home happy. The only thing when we can be mad on ourselves is when we know that we could do some things better. And there is always these kind of things. But the point is, every loot that every loss that I have in my life, I actually like, and it sounds weird, but I learn more from my, my, my loss than, than from my wins. Because if you're winning, you think everything is well and going well and you don't analyze things well enough. We, yes, I'm trying to analyze things even if you're winning, but losing is always making you work harder. So I, I, I enjoyed equally in my winning season as in my losing seasons. And I never put the pressure on a player if I if I saw that he, he is competitive, that he's you know fighting, that he want to win. So these players you can only respect. The, the problem is when a player has lack of motivation. And then again, you have to speak with him to understand why he is in this. Way. I really believe in speaking, talking with the players because you have to explain. You know, and you have to understand how he feels to help him. I, I wouldn't be hard on anybody. I know some pa parents that are super hard on their kids if they play bad. Playing bad is a, is a part of a game, but, but you know, you have to try to learn and you have to try to enjoy the game because basketball is a game, it's just a game, it should be fun game. And if we make it fun, that we, then we're going to enjoy in winning and losing. And I hate when people think when somebody is laughing and having fun that he's not serious enough and that he doesn't want to win. Because sometimes in our culture, especially in Serbian culture, I don't know how it's in England, if somebody see you, see you smiling, they think you don't want to win, that you're, you're not serious. I want to win when I'm smiling. So for me, just your fake facial expression doesn't mean that if you're, I'm serious, no, I'm, I want to win more than a guy who, who has a smile on your face. So I feel that if you have fun by playing basketball. That's why our, our logo and our model when we are deciding what basketball of our academy is to learn like having fun. So like you have to have fun. Because why we start playing basketball? Because we want to have fun. Yeah. And if you lose this down the road, you're never going to be a good player. I think, I know now, because I'm working with the top level of players, they, they, they have fun. Yeah. They have fun and, and, and you know, have to keep this you know, onto your I mean, that again is a great preparation for the next question. Um, and remember, I've got a lot of questions here, so I'm very I'm, nice. I'm, I'm really, I guess, that line. You know, so, I, 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 want, I want, you know, share my knowledge. No, I you know, appreciate it. And if appreciate I can help anybody, I'm, I'm really an open to Appreciate it. So, um, one of the things that came back was that point about having fun. Is uh, one of the parents who said that they find that the, the, the children are. Know, getting too serious too quickly, right? So they're very young, and now they're like, okay, what have I got to do to be Steph Curry? What have I got to do to get to the NBA? And 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 maybe training programs that are much more regimented rather than having fun. So yeah. your advice would be to that young person would be one. Yeah, my, my advice would be you have to be ambitious. Mm -hmm. Like I want to be the best coach in the world, mm -hmm. but if I'm not. I'm not going to be unhappy. So yes, I want to be step curve. Mm -hmm. But if I'm not, let, let's be the best version of myself. And like some players are, uh, you know, hard on themselves if, if they are not achieving the goal that they have. And you have to be ambitious and you have to have, to have high goals. But you have to be satisfied, you know, and you have to push yourself with the current situation mm -hmm. And you have to try to find the best version of yourself self currently and then to upgrade yourself to be better. You know, like, if, if you want to be whoever, whatever is your wishes and hopes, and, and then if you don't achieve, like, are you going to be depressed? Are you going to know? It has to push you, you know, further and try to be the best version. Like, you know, guys, you know, there's so many kids here, and if just a few of you become serious 
players, they, 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 you know, that this is helping. Only 4,000 people in, in NBA history, so history of NBA from 76 years now, you know, how many played NBA? So it's only 4,000 people. And do you know how many million kids every season they dream that they become NBA players? Mm -hmm. So the level of success is low. And this shouldn't discourage you, but this should make you realistic how hard it is to achieve. So you should work hard, you have to have dreams of becoming an NBA player. But if this leads you, for example, to become, uh, you know, British national team, you know, player, that's great, even if you are not. And be a player. So this high ambition will push you higher, but it shouldn't discourage you if you don't, don't achieve your goal. Right? Setting higher goals is good because you're going to go first. But if you don't achieve it, you have to learn how to deal with this and be satisfied. And you should only be worried if you feel that you are not giving your best effort. We all know when you look yourself in the mirror, did we give ourselves? You know, did we give everything that we had? And you know. That was always my motto in my life, you know, just, you know, give everything you can and whatever has to happen, you can have so That's my life. Um, so one more question on the, the game side before we get to, I think everybody's favorite topic, the golf is there. But um, a good question from young Ryan was talking about, uh, he struggles a little bit with um, the game side of it. He's on the right track, right? But mentally, right, he's very frustrated himself and doesn't seem to find that there's enough information out there to prepare and train mentally. So you're asking, you know, what can you do to get better for the mental preparation of the game? There is one line that Steph Curry is saying, and not just Steph Curry, like I know many players are saying, is it, it is next play. What means next play? You cannot fix the mistakes that you did. So if you think about them, you're not going to be better, you're going to frustrate yourself, and you're not going to be ready to play the next play well enough. Mm -hmm. So like the moment you made a mistake, you have to forget about it, and then you know you just think about the next play and making the right, the right play. So you cannot let the previous mistakes influence your next, next decisions. Mm -hmm. So if you achieve that mindset, next play, then you can you know miss six, seven times in a row, and then make them, fix them time now. And if you are depressed and oh, I can't make anything, I'm making a mistake, then you cannot go out and hold. Mm -hmm. So next play is the thing. So, so and, 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 you know, you have to understand that, bas that basketball is a game made of mistakes. Mm -hmm. And you have to deal with, and not the, every mistake is the same. You have the right mistake. If you do the right mistake, what? I want to do right play, but I didn't execute well. That's still good play. So if you shoot an open good shot and you missed it, what the hell, you know, just, just keep, keep buying and play an next play. So like, try to forget about mistakes that you're, you're doing and go next play. That's a great answer. Um, so we have a, a young lady, young girl amongst us who gives us the best questions. Right? She's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, 10 years old. Um, so, again, if, if these questions are um, uh, close to the bone, remember it came from a 10 year old, not me. Okay. So she says, um, why, are Golden State, why, why are the Golden State Warriors not as successful last season as before? What changed? Did the mindset change? What is, and, and also, like, have anything to do with discipline or anything that nature? Second unit is a game changer in the NBA. So, the season before, we had most productive second unit in the week last season. We did. So our core, our core is the same, but the NBA champions are ha having a full roster. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, that, that's why you know the, the best second unit team is making a difference in the league. Last season, our second unit didn't work well. We had by the numbers the best first unit so starting lineup. We had the best unit by the numbers plus minus that we had in the most best in the league. But our second unit was one of the worst, so that's why we made we made some changes, we made some trades, and I have really high hopes for the next season. And, and on, okay. on that point, um, again going back to uh, Toby asking about with the team coming up this year, you you have uh, Chris Paul joining Steph. They yeah. used to be adversaries. 
now they have to play together. And again, we don't know what Steve or the coaching staff's plans are, but you know, how do you feel going into this new year? Both those or icons really are going to handle turning from competitors to teammates. If you're a winner like they are, they're going to figure out. You know, because uh, Chris Paul was always playing in the teams when he was a ball dominant guy, you know, playing ball, pick and roll. We are a bit different team. Yes, we're going to adjust our game a bit more to Chris Paul, of course, but he's going to fit to our game also. So, and if you have a winning players, then they're going to do whatever they need to win. So, this is what great players do. They are adjusting to the situation they're in, and then I think it, you know, it's going to work out for sure. Because Chris is for sure hungry, you know, for winning championship. Mm -hmm. And now, you know, we have a chance. And it's not easy because in NBA, there is like at least 10 teams that they can win championship. So you have to be in the right form, in the, in the right time, you have to stay healthy. And, you know, then, and, and plus you have some teams that you play easier with and you have some teams that you play, you know, harder with. So everything has to, you know, get together for you to win championship. So we're going to have a chance for sure. So are we going to do it? I hope like, there is no guarantee for anybody, even for them, that is, you know, best team in the league for our time. Let's see. Um, so on that point about Chris Paul, this one Chris Paul question was just, Again, not that you've coached Chris Paul yet, but they've got a lot of, lots of respect for Chris Paul's point guard skills and decision making. And asking, um, what do you think Chris Paul does to improve decision making because he's such a high IQ player? Yeah, like, uh, I didn't coach him. I, I, of course, met him when uh, he signed for us. You know, we had some meetings, you know, and we had some conversation. And I'm seeing him ready to adjust his game know, into our system and ready, ready to play. Yes, we're going to do some, some more, you know, things that then, then you know, be different than we were playing last season because what is coaching job? You have to see the personnel that you have and you have to feed the game according to the personnel yeah. that you have. So, you know, if you have Chris Paul, one of the best you know, players ever, for sure, you know, we're going to, we're going to play, we're going to play more pick and roll than usual. But this, this thing is like, how Warriors are working. So when we get together, we're going to have our coaches retreat. We're going to get together the coaches. I am a family coordinator uh, in the Warriors. We have like a few offensive coordinators, three defensive coordinators, Steve as a mastermind behind us. And then we're going to get together and then we're going to decide what we're going to do. And all summer, we are thinking now about the things that we can do. We are cutting grapes, we are getting the ideas. And then when we get together for the next season, the coaches are bringing their ideas up, and then we all decide, you know, what what is the best for us for the next season. So I have a very fun job. Makes a lot of sense. So we've got about uh, five to eight minutes left. So I'm going to open up to the floor. If any of the people at the back, at the front, have any questions, add them. Can't be ready. Um, raise your hand and let me know what it is. Please stand up. Stand up, stand up, stand up. Um, what does Draymond Green do to practice his on ball defense? Yeah, like he, he's, he's challenging people. And, and, you know, when I say challenging people, he likes to play one on one. And, you know, not just one on one. Draymond is good on ball defender, but I think he's even better off ball defender. And what is he doing? He's analyzing his games. He's watching the games that he's playing, and he's analyzing what he can do differently. So you always like get getting clips and seeing yourself playing and analyzing your game is a huge part of development. Then this is what Raymond, Raymond is doing all season. Like he is analyzing opponents, so you know who to play against, and he knows strengths and weaknesses of the opponents, and then you know he prepares for the player that he play against. So this is the only way you have to know your opponent to defend the ball. Any more questions? Sit up. <coughs> It's you, you have to feel this is a coach's feeling. Are they under, under stress or they are relaxed? So like you have to have different approach. And if you feel the player is under tension, then you have to relax in the player. And, and then 
if you feel that he's too old, they have to, you know, back the guy. So like, this is like a personal feeling that every coach has to have. So you have to know your players, and if you feel that somebody is too nervous, you have to calm, calm down. <laughs> What's a champ's mindset for you? What's a champ's mindset? Yeah, it's, 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 great, it's a great question. You know, the champ mind, mindset means that I respect my opponent, but I don't care who he is, I'm going to be. Mm -hmm. So, like, respecting and over respecting people is a key difference for me between champions and you know, good players. Because some players are over respecting their opponents, and then when they realize that they actually beat, can beat them, the, the game is all already done. So you have to go in the game with respect if somebody is good, but no respect. You say, whoever you are, I don't care, I'm going to beat you. So this is champion. Nice. Um, what's your favorite sport? What do they do to you if you that There is a lot of natural talent, to be fair, like there is, but there is also a lot of work. And we are lifting weights a lot, all whole season. We are doing, we have a great trainers, performance stuff is great. And after every game, we have like a recovery uh, weightlifting. To, you know, to recover our bodies even after games. You know, we are doing after every game. It's a light weight, but you know, it's consistent. And I believe in compound investing, in compound practicing. So, like a bit by bit, sometimes you think like, what is like 20 minutes of weightlifting? But if you do this 20 minutes, you know, all season, then you know it becomes hours of weightlifting during the season. So, like J.K. is super athletic. He's working on his body. He's taking care, you know, of, of, of all things around the court to, you know, put him in the best position to play well. He he's having, you know, uh, he's really talented kid. He's young, 2021, 20, and I believe, you know, he's gonna have a really good career in the NBA. I'm gonna go with just uh, two more, two more questions only. Yes. What does Steph Curry do to warm up his jump shot? Uh, I, I was doing, I, I was trying, like, you know, he, again, he does some simple things. Like he's going underneath the ring, you know, shoot with one hand, then he starts shooting with two. Then he's going step, step by step, further making shots, you know, but he uh, he's doing this. He doesn't shoot, like, hours of tough shots, no, but he has his routine that he is doing daily. And then he's doing his game-like shots that he has. And this may last around 30 minutes, and, and that's it. But again, compound it. 30 minutes, 30 minutes every day, and then if you, you know, take a stretch of the whole season, then, then these 30 minutes becomes hours of shooting during the season. Don't underestimate small minutes of practice or something. Right? But if you do this consistently, you're going to get benefits from that for sure. Okay, okay, sure. Right. Yeah, right. um, what do you think is the best daily routine for players trying to make it? Uh, there is no best routine. You know why? Depends which position you are. So, like, you know, so, so, you know, so, so you have to understand what kind of player you want to be, and you have to understand what should you be a lead skill. But, uh, why I'm pointing on this elite skill? There is no player. In the NBA, I'm talking about the, you know, stars, not not average players. There is no star in the NBA that doesn't have elite skill. Like he asked me, what Raymond does for defense? <coughs> defense is his elite skill, and he's doing things to improve defense. So you have to figure out what you're good at, what you can be good at, and then work on those those things. If you are a great shooter, then shooting should be your, you know, routine. If, if you are a different kind of player, then you have to, you know, do some strengths as a foundation, and then you have to do some part of improving the things that you need to improve. Because every player, you know, has things to improve. And again, compound thing, you're young. If every season, look at this, every <coughs> season, you improve just one thing, just one. You say, this season I'm going to do this. Next season I'm going to improve this. And then in 
five or six years, you're going to be a really good player with five or six different things mastering. And, and for the players, it's not easy. They want to try to do different things. But if you say, like, for example, this season I want to work on my jump shot, and you really work on your jump shot, and then next season, and then you become a really good shooter, for example, spot up, then the next season you say, I'm going to put a pull up in my, you know, in my package, so that now next season you are not just a spot up shooter, you are a pull up shooter, so now you can do two things. Then third, third season, you know, you, you try to say, okay, now I'm going to masterize my penetration. Then in a three seasons, you, know, you can do a lot of different things. And if you're doing everything a, a, a bit and you're not elite in anything, it's not going to leave anything. So, very, very last question, that's okay. One I'm going to ask you for, for everybody, just for yourself. Okay? Um, what is your, as a coach, very accomplished coach, what is your proudest moment and why? I have a lot of proud moments, to, to, to be fair. Like, you know, winning championship with Mega, with Sajan over there as my assistant, you know, we then cup, you know, fought with the young team and beating, you know, team that. that like purely whatever I cannot remember it was a huge achievement for for young team. Then, you know, my five player going to the NBA like was the first thing, like Jokic was the first guy going to NBA and then achieving what is that the second thing that made me proud. Third thing like is me going to NBA. Like, you know, it's a it's a really hard as a coach to get a chance for being an NBA. Like with the players, there is only like six assistants, so like 30 teams, 180 jobs for like thousands of coaches all around the world. And there is only 200, you know, with the head coaches, like you know, 210 jobs total. So imagine how small chance is that you, you know, go to the NBA and I achieve, I achieve it, then I won't check that. Like, and again, like it's a, so like, then I was assistant the national, national team, that is again, you know, so then in Montenegro I won, Championship and, 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 and you know cup over there. So like, I have a lot of proud moments. But what is what makes me proud overall is that uh, I am really close with all of my ex players because they knew that I treated them well, that, 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 that I helped them. When I say I am talking about the whole coaching style because not any coach is working by himself. Like here, we're working all together. You know, it's not that case. Like coaches, you know, and Bane and Imo, like every, everything is, you know, together. Like in a team, team is winning together. It's not Steph Curry's best player, but he couldn't win by himself either. There's like teammates around. And then I'm really proud that all the players that went through my programs, are you know now my friends and that's that's the best for me. I just wanted to ask um, what do you think uh, Golden State would need to maybe win the championship next year? I think we have that. Like I think we have really good trades. I think Dario Saric is a great player, you know Corey Joseph and Chris Paul and now I think we're gonna have a really good second unit with the core that we have if we stay healthy, we're gonna have a chance. It's like who gonna win, we're gonna see, but I feel we're gonna have a chance to, to you know to, to be good next year. All right. Uh, I like the one. All right, this is the very last one. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead. Your kids, he's not the most athletic player on his team, but like what does he do to control the ball and control his team so well? Uh, he, he's not athletic in a way that he cannot bounce and he's not super quick. But Jokic is super strong because he's really, really strong guy. I think he's top five in NBA by strength. His body frame is big, his wingspan is, is huge, and besides, he's seven footer. So when he's going in contact with people, you cannot jump and push in the same time. So if he's going into people like they're bouncing, He's controlling them with the contact that he has with them. So it doesn't matter how high you jump, if I'm pushing you, you cannot jump. So that's what he's doing. He's using his body to, you know, uh, overcome the lack of, I cannot say athleticism because he's strong, but lack of, you know, uh, vertical aim. 
<laughs> okay, very well. I, you see, you know, I will keep going. No, I, I, I would go for an hour, but the, the dinner is just, just remember everybody's stomachs are hungry too. Yes. When, you, when you're breaking down the tape with your point guards, what do you talk to them about? What do you think about? It, it, it's just decision making. So, like, you know, for example, you analyze situations, you stop, you cut a clip, and then you say, like, in this situation, you should pass or you should finish, or like, you know, you try to analyze your point guard what he should do in each situation. So, like, for example, if you watch a game by yourself, you see how you play. Then you try to be realistic and try to see, like, what you could do differently in the situations, like, what kinds of red time. So you have to try to push yourself and thinking like, okay, maybe the decision was better if I pass the ball on the side, if I, you know, shoot this shot, if I didn't go all the way, or it's opposite. If I should go all the way, or if I should stop, jump, stop, and make one fake. So you have to an analyze decisions that you make. And for me, development is, more important development is decision making than all the tricks that trainers and coaches are, are, are telling me. Like there are some players that are not very skillful, but their decision making is elite, and they are with players. Either they are not super skillful, and they cannot do, you know, these cross dribbles and you know some tricky shots or whatever. But they are reading the game well. And, you know, so you, what 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 we are doing with point guards, telling them what they should do in this situation. That is fantastic. All right, guys, let's uh, have a final round of applause, of course. Okay guys, uh, thank you to Dan and uh, I hope you enjoyed today with him.